Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions, your premier platform for real-time global insights. So we just take a look at some of the major weather hazards we were dealing with uh, as we move into early Thursday morning. Uh, the big feature to be watching here is this system that's kind of emerging in parts of Texas and Oklahoma. We've got winter weather advisories and also winter storm warnings in here in parts of Oklahoma and uh, north central Texas, and uh, they're warranted. I was watching the radar all night long uh, on Wednesday night early Thursday morning, seeing a mix of sleet and freezing rain in and around that area. Well, this is just kind of phase one. That's phase one you're watching over there in that radar animation. So this right here, a lot of this was a mix. Big shield of precipitation out ahead of this just fed on Gulf moisture. And again, we're putting down a lot of rain in this area that just uh, on uh, both on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day got a bunch of rain, including some severe weather in through this area. So when you just look over the last month, uh, here we're looking at the bottom uh, left-hand map here. Uh, this is a uh, percent of normal precipitation. It was an incredibly wet into the year. You're seeing anywhere in these blue colors here over 200% of normal precipitation. And when I made this map, we were missing some of the data from the data feed up here in parts of the Northwest, but clearly you can see uh, the, the very uh, wet December that we had here. Okay, so let's take a closer look at what we're expecting there in parts of Texas and Oklahoma. So our next map we're going to take a look at here is from the European model. I looked at several different models to try to pick up on the, on the total amount of snow that was going to come out of this and compared it to the National Weather Service. And uh, while this will be kind of a, a heavy and wet, kind of quick hitting snow here Thursday morning and throughout part of the day on Thursday, you know, there could be some place right in through here south of Oklahoma City that does get six to eight inches. I think the models got it overdone a little bit bit here in terms of total amount, but certainly this is going to be a, a wet and slushy snow coming out of this system. Now remember, we've only seen the beginning of this. If you're waking up early Thursday morning and watching this, the main trough feature is still sitting back here, and as it kind of moves over this area, it will provide this extra round of upper level support to kick off that snow throughout the day on Thursday. And you can just see in the kind of the overall you know view here, the mid-levels of the atmosphere, we've got flow coming like this. And that's going to continue to support this system as it kind of treks here on off uh, really toward the south and east due to kind of the split flow pattern we have going across the country right now. Remember, we talked quite a bit about that setup. So let's take a look at what our short uh, range model run is going to uh, say about this. So we're going to look at the high resolution NAM here. And let me just take you from about 5 a.m. in the morning on Thursday through the mid morning hours. So this is now through 10 a.m., 11 and noon. And you can see here uh, the widespread showers and storms ahead of this and then the snow kind of curling around on the back side. Now we might be able to bring in enough warm air that throughout the day that could actually transition as the heat comes in over into some rain in the evening hours. But this system will continue to kind of push on off uh, toward the south and east and bring some rain, uh, more rain I should say, into parts of Tennessee, Kentucky, and the Ohio River Valley. And then you can see they're kind of a frontal squall line moving through the day on Friday uh, down there through the southeast. So that's kind of the, the evolution of our, of our near-term system. The more we're watching here, uh, you know, uh, through the end of the week. Okay, bigger picture, these are the features that I'm really trying to clue in on and take a, a good look at what's going on. We still have this pattern, okay? This is this strong subtropical jet, and we will be watching this deepening upper level low come off right here, where I put that yellow arrow, and this is going to be lashing California here. I'll show you that in just a few seconds. We can also see that we've got a very active pattern here, kind of in the Gulf of Alaska, getting over into, uh, you know, uh, near the Aleutian Islands. Multiple systems lined up in this area and we got to be watching this particular area over the coming days as maybe the the main region that's going to set up our flow pattern which is going to lead to a rather mild start to January and also we will be seeing the Madden Julian oscillation moving towards phases seven and eight and that's where we get a lot of thunderstorm activity over here in that particular region I just circled to put an X through it right here to tell you where we're watching things so this is kind of our setup and it's a go 17 imager here kind of giving us the bigger picture so Let's diagnose this by first taking a look at what the European model is saying in terms of uh, our, our kind of active weather pattern. So let's just watch this again. Here goes the first system there. That's the one that's off to the to the uh, the south, running through the southeast, bringing in heavy rain uh, from the lower Mississippi River Valley over to, you know, Carolinas and Virginia. So that's system number one. It heads on up to the northeast. Not a big snowmaker at this point, but we're going to watch the northeast here in a few minutes. Take your attention back to the west coast. Now look at this. Uh, this is now Friday night 
getting into Saturday morning. Look at that deep low pressure system sitting off the west coast there. And here it comes. And it's going to be bringing a lot of rain and some big time snows for the Sierra Nevadas and the coastal range as you move up into Oregon and Washington. That's just system number one coming through on Saturday for the western United States. Now, you saw those systems lined up in the North Pacific. They were going to go over the mountains and kind of reinvigorate here across the middle part of the country. But this is going to be happening by the time we get into Monday the 7th. You can start to see a low pressure system kind of taking shape in this general area. Sorry, let me get you over to there to black uh, line. And uh, it looks as though we're going to have so much warm air on this that we'll probably push the, push the rain snow line pretty far to the north. So as the system comes through, yeah, Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, Wisconsin, northern Michigan, definitely getting uh, the snow out of this, but it looks as though points to the south of there are going to be just too warm uh, for this particular system to be doing anything but rain. So we're just soaking those areas again. Now, at this particular point, I'm now to January 8th. This is Tuesday the 8th. We're going to watch both coasts kind of light up here. The West Coast getting its next major system coming on shore. So look at this, California, you're getting it again. Uh, this will now be the Tuesday the 8th getting into Wednesday the 9th. And at the at the same time, the operational GF, or I'm sorry, uh, European model here wants to produce a pretty sizable nor'easter that could be putting down quite a bit of snow here in the Northeast. Meanwhile, after that rain comes through the middle part of the country, things are relatively quiet at this point. And that's because we're building in a pretty big ridge there in the middle part of the US and that's going to block things up a little bit. In fact, you can see the result of it producing a high pressure center down here. So that's going to kind of keep things well relatively quiet overall at least in the short term. Now, I say short term because the operational European model wants to do this by the time we get out to the 11th, 12th and 13th. And that is to produce somewhere in that time frame a pretty sizable Midwest uh, storm system. Now, please understand, I am out in model La La Land here, but I'm just trying to get a, a clue on what this active pattern in the Pacific Ocean is going to do with this kind of split flow, this northerly branch of the jet stream and this really strong subtropical branch. So it's a pretty a confusing picture. So I, I think what I'd like to do is just take you back to around the, uh, the seventh, eighth. I, I feel pretty comfortable going out about that far, kind of showing you how things are going to be evolving overall here, just at least taking us out for one week. Okay. When we look at this longer term pattern, there are so many things that in a any other time frame, I would have told you a completely different story. So just imagine I had no idea what the date was and you showed me these two maps. I saw the Mad Julian Oscillation going from phase six straight over to phase seven, eight before curling back around to the null phase. And then I saw the polar vortex basically split into one piece that's sitting here and spinning over parts of, of Northern Europe and Eurasia. And then a second piece sitting over here. If you would have just showed me this, you know, I would have said, well, due to that sudden stratospheric warming going on there, MJ going to phase six, seven, and eight, I would have said, oh, this is a big time cold pattern uh, for the eastern part of the United States. And remember, when we saw this evolving over the last three weeks, we, we were saying, hey, history would tell us this is what was, what was going to happen. But here's where things get interesting, okay? If we want to see a jet stream pattern that gives us really sustained cold here in January uh, in the eastern two-thirds of the United States, we got to get blocked up in two places. One of them is here over Greenland, and another one is here, kind of in the Gulf of Alaska. You see, for the eastern two-thirds of the country to get cold, we got to see the jet stream do this. And when it does that, that allows all that cold air from Canada just to be coming down here uh, into the into the central United States. And we also see all these little clipper systems that come here on the flow like this. And then, of course, we get these big coastal lows that go racing up. So this means snow everywhere from Montana through the Great Lakes states into the Ohio River Valley and up into the northeast. And instead, we don't have this. Check it out. Here is the 500 millibar height pattern. And I'll animate this out through the next uh, 15 days. Look at what we have. Instead of having a giant ridge sitting here, I'll just kind of circle it. We don't have that. We have a trough nearby. We have the ridge that's over toward Iceland. In fact, it's more over toward Europe. And then we just keep seeing these deep trough features coming out of the Gulf of Alaska. And if that happens, that just pushes ridges in this area here in the eastern two-thirds of the country. Now watch, I'll take off my drawings here and just kind of keep playing this forward. What do we see? We keep seeing the Gulf of Alaska reloading with these troughs taking you all the way out to the 11th, 
12th. And we got to get past this. We got to break this pattern down before we're able to really introduce a lot of cold air and bring winter back to the eastern two thirds of the country. Meanwhile, I'm happy for the West Coast. They need this. I mean, the West Coast needs to fill those reservoirs. They need the snow in the mountains so that they can have a great weather year for next year. But right now, for the snow lovers in the eastern two thirds of the country, we are missing out. This is what the temperature patterns do, and this is just the model being consistent with itself. Are you ready? I'll play this out next 15 days, temperature anomalies from the European Model Ensemble. And you just see that the model's having a really difficult time bringing in any sort of sustained cold air. And that's because we do not have the two features in this area we need to really allow Canada to unleash cold air on the eastern two-thirds of the United States. So that's it. And... Here we go. This is all the way up to January 17th. We may get to mid-month before we finally break this feature down. So we're going to have to watch it carefully. Now, understand something. Uh, beyond the next seven or eight days, we could have some short term colder outbreaks like we had at the beginning of the year. Remember how cold it was in Montana and the Dakotas with that big colder outbreak that came in? I'm talking here about sustained cold, cold that sticks around for half a month, maybe even 30 days. We got to get this pattern and change. Maybe we'll be doing so by mid-January. In the meantime, because of the activity coming out of the Gulf of Alaska, look at the wetter than average conditions here. Because of the strong subtropical jet stream doing this, look at the wetter than average conditions in that area. In California, you do have a couple of big systems coming on shore here very soon that are going to continue to cause some problems. Now, speaking of this map here that shows you the next 15 days in terms of percent of normal precipitation, I got to take you to South America. You see, because the MJO is moving from phase five to six, where it is now, slowly into seven and eight, we're going to see that it's going to take a little bit longer to get rid of this drier pattern that we have sitting right now in parts of Brazil. When you look over the last month, so this is the last month shown over there on the right, uh, this coming from GPM, this is satellite derived precipitation, we can see that we had a significant chunk of Brazil's major growing areas here uh, getting anywhere between 75 and 25 percent of normal precipitation with the worst being right here in Mato Grosso do Sul and parts of Parna. Uh, so that's uh, that that's going to be interesting to see how this plays out as this bean crop comes in, as they've already started the early harvesting in parts of Mato Grosso. Meanwhile, look at what's going on down in Argentina. It has been just on again, off again with the floodgates. Uh, remember, remember, way go back into November, then get into December. They had uh, 10, 15 day dry stretches followed by huge torrential rains. We're going right back into that wetter than average pattern in parts of far southern Brazil, Uruguay, and northern Argentina. So we have some adversity coming out of South America, and we're going to have to just keep a close eye on this as it continues to progress, uh, because it could mean uh, that the potential for them having another record crop could be be kind of on the line here uh, as being disrupted by some poor weather at the begin at the end of no uh, December and beginning of January. Okay, with all of that, though, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. I hope you all had a very safe and happy start to the new year. I wish us all the best in 2019. Let's hope that the weather comes in favorable for all of us. Thank you.